Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Crafty on Run Tippy. So, a little bit about this series, I've been going over home labs, or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today, Crafty4. Crafty4 is the next iteration of our Minecraft server wrapper, controller, launcher, boasting a clean new look built from the ground up. So this is what I'll be installing today. So I'm going to start on Beeper Run Tippy, and there will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go over to search and type Crafty, and then I'm going to go into the apps Crafty right here, metadata, description, and now you see the App Store description, logo, the config.json, which is the name available and the exposable, the port that you'll go to, and then the ID, HTTPS, and tippy version, version, and then the categories, description, the short description, the author, and then source, the website, forum fields are empty, and the support the architectures, ARM64 and AMD64. And that rhymes with over here of what the image supports. Um, so version 3.7 of Docker and Buzz file formats being used. I'm going to set some services. And the first service underneath the services is called Crafty. The container name is going to be called Crafty. The image is coming off of the registry of GitLab. And you know that because this URL right here. And then this is the Docker image. And then this is the Docker image tag. It's 440. And then restart and list stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And environment variables. So the time zone is only one. Ports right here. So the app port right here is a, dot, a dot, dot dynamic. And it's gotten from the config.json over here of the port. And then we'll go back to the Docker and pose. So 8123 is on the host, and then on the container is 8123. Um, the container port for the app port, and then is 8443 is on the container. So the left side is the host, the right side is the container, and this is a, a port range on the host and the container. So net, networks, we're going to put this in the tippy main network. And then volumes down here, so same with this, same as the ports. On the left side is the host, on the right side is the container path. So app data directory is dynamic. And then data backups, and same goes for all these. So crafty backups, and then crafty logs, and then data logs. So now labels right here, so main, web, web secure, local domain, and local domain secure. It uses uh, traffic to, uh, for the proxy. Instead of exposing the container directly, it used traffic to go into it. So that's a little bit about the Docker and Pose and the files in Big Bear and Tippy. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So, now I'm going to start on my run tippy. I'm going to go to the App Store, and then I'm going to come over to Search and type Crafty. Then you see it right here, so you can click it. Now you can press Install, and then um, you can press Install. And what this is doing is this downloading the Docker image off the registry, getting extracted, and getting it up with Docker Compose underneath because this is using the Docker engine. It's also setting up the um, network and the volumes. So now we got it up and running, and it's good to go. So now when you're in your run tippy, you, you, you can go up here to My Apps right here, click it, and then you'll see Crafty and your apps. So you can stop the cont a container, restart, open, 
in the end, uh, go to settings and you can turn on reverse proxy, expose it, uh, the app to the internet. You can reset, update. I want you to change this. You press the update. Um, you can exit out of here. You can see the description that was inside of the GitHub repo. The other base info that was in the config.json source, author, port, categories, version, supported architectures, and the website. And um, if you go up here to settings and you go to settings, uh, you can scroll down to storage path right here. So we will need to uh, remember this path. So it's an opt and run tippy. Um, so we'll need to go back to the my apps, go to crafty, and then you can see default credentials are located here, right here. So on mine, I'll have to uh, uh, do opt and then run tippy app data crafty config default creds.txt. So I'm going to SSH into my run tippy server and uh, cat this out and get the default credentials. So now I SSH into my run tippy and I'm going to um, go to, uh, I'm going to do cat and then opt. And then I'm going to paste in what I copied over there. But one thing we do need to change is after crafty right here, we need to add data. So um, now I'm going to return or enter. So now the username is admin. The password is this. So I'm going to copy the password. And then I'm going to go over to my um, run tippy and go to the UI of crafty. So now I'm going to start on my run tippy. I'm going to go to my apps and then crafty and then open right here. I'm going to go to the IP, click it, and then now you can log in. So um, it, it does have a cell sign certificate, so you might have to accept it and proceed. Um, so I'm going to type in admin, and then I'm going to paste in the password that I copied when I SSH'd into my RNTP. I'm going to log in. So now we successfully logged in to Crafty. So now when you're on the crafty panel, you'll see CPU, memory, the servers, and then players, and then the storage. Um, you can see your servers down here once you create one. Um, you can go over here and you can create a new server. You can uh, see documentation, in-app docs, Discord, credits, and contribute. Um, you can go over here to notifications, and then you can go up here to the cogs and go to panel config users roles and you can add a new user or role you can go to the config.json right here and you can change the settings and then press submit um you can go to customize crafty right here and then customize it apply and then delete um so if you go over here and you go to servers create new server you can cr create a new server, import an existing server, import from a zip file, upload zip file for server import, and then you can go over here to Minecraft Bedrock, and you can create a new server, import an existing one, import from a zip file, and upload a zip file for server import. Um, so that's a little bit about the Crafty Controller UI. So now I'm going to create a server. So I'm going to go to servers, create new server. And then now you can pick your server type. So Minecraft servers, proxies, I'm going to go with Minecraft servers. And then you can go with paper, uh, fabric, folia, and then uh, forge installer and purper, and then vanilla uh, by default. I'm going to go with paper. And then you can select your version. And then you can put a server name in. So I'm going to say testing server. You can set the minimum memory and the maximum memory and the server port. You can also reset the form. I'm going to build the server now. And it's going to download the um, executable. It's downloading the executable now and it's finished. Um, so we can go ahead and start it. And we must agree to the Minecraft EULA right here. So I'm going to say yes. So now it's online. So we can go into the server. And then go to the logs. And now it's remapping.
So now it's up and running and it says done. Um, so you can go ahead and you can see the terminal right here. Then the logs where we were. You can schedule. So you can create a new schedule right here. And you can name it basic crone reaction. And then you can put a, cr a crone job in. And then reaction start server restart shut down backup and custom command select the parent schedule um, en enable and delete after execution save and cancel you can go to backup right here and you can back up now uh, select the storage lo location and then max backups compress backup shut down server for duration of backup and then run command before backup then you put that in and then run after backup you can click here uh, to exclude things uh, from the backup, save, and cancel. Um, you can go ahead and go to files over here, and you can see the files, and you can go into them right here. You can set the key bindings for uh, a default, vim, emacs, sublime, and toggle editor size, and then save. Uh, that's for this, the editor over here. Um, so you can go ahead and go to the config, and then you can press save if you change any of this and cancel. Um, you can stop the server and then you can get access to the update executable and delete server. The pl player management over here, you can see players and band players. Metrics, you can see um, CPU and RAM. And then you can also see the players down here as well. Um, you can go ahead and go to a webhooks and you can put a new webhook in and a discord mattermost slack and teams and then you can set a set a, set as tri a trigger so server started server stopped crashed backup completed executable updated co a command received and ser server killed so that's how to create a server in crafty so I just went over step by step on getting crafty running on Run Tippy. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.